Major breaking news as I shoot this video, and it's going on now in the United States Supreme Court. The cavalry is on the way. We already have 20, that's 20 briefs, have been submitted in support of the Second Amendment to attack Mayor Garland's attempt to destroy Nyserpa versus Brood and to destroy the meaning of the Second Amendment as understood by our founders. Stay tuned, we're going to talk about this for just a couple minutes. Hey folks, I'm Mark Smith, host of The Four Box, Diner, proud American governor, constitutional attorney, member of the United States Supreme Court Bar and author of First They Came for the Gunners. Check it out on Audible as well as on Amazon. All right, folks, breaking news. United States versus Rahimi. This is the big Second Amendment case before the U.S. Supreme Court. It is a clear and present danger to the Second Amendment, but that doesn't mean we're going to lose and that doesn't mean it's game over. It just means it's a risk and a danger and we're dealing with it. And the good news is the cavalry is on the way. Today is the last day that you can file an amicus brief to support the Second Amendment and defend Mr. Rahimi's arguments about why 18 U.S.C. 922 G8 is unconstitutional under the Second Amendment. So as of now, we have about 20 briefs that have been filed, 20 amicus briefs. We're going to start covering this in more detail, essentially from my quick skim of the briefs. Here's some of the quick impressions I have. And again, we'll break it down in more detail in a bit. The first is powerful, powerful arguments about why there's simply no historical analog at the time of the founding to justify losing your gun rights during the pendency of a domestic violence restraining order when frankly there isn't really even a finding that you're dangerous to anyone nevertheless a lot of arguments there about no historical analogs a lot of arguments about you know laws that disbar uh, disarm catholics laws that disarm the indians or the native americans laws that disarm the tories a lot of arguments here about these various laws at the time of the founding that did exist and why they're not applicable to an american citizen under the second amendment's right to keep and bear arms powerful stuff here. We also are seeing a lot of discussion appears to be laser focused on 1791 is the relevant time period as well. It is the relevant time period because I've talked about this in many instances. You all know this. The other thing we're seeing is a strong defense of Nyserpa versus Bruin and the methodology, which is often referred to as the Bruin methodology of text first and then historical analog second. After the text is implicated, the burden shifts to the government to come forth with a historical analog or a tradition of historical analogs to justify their modern day gun control. Law. And of course, they're not, I don't think they're going to be able to do it in 922G8 uh, here. Again, going to be hard for them, but there's a lot of good arguments here. And then there's also a lot of arguments I noticed about basically don't buy into this appeal to emotion. Don't buy into this appeal to emotion, which is really a lot of what the other side is saying, meaning the government and the government amici who support Mayor Garland, Joe Biden, and the Department of Justice in this case are trying to basically say that domestic violence is bad. It's bad when men and women are shot by their intimate partners. Duh, we know that. But it's also being pointed out in the briefs, as best I can tell, that this law, 18 U.S.C. 922 G8, is rarely, rarely enforced. Maybe it's a, maybe you see a couple dozen convictions all across the United States in a given year in contrast to, let's say, the types of convictions you see under a different part of 922, which deals with prohibited people, and that would be 922 G1, which deals with felons in possession of firearms. But we know, and I bet you dollars to donuts, that the U.S. Supreme Court knows now that the reason why this case was brought by Merrick Garland was because he wants to screw up the methodology of Heller, Bruin, text first, history second. That is exactly what this is about, but it's pretty clear from the briefs that I've been skimming through already that this is being brought to the attention of the Supreme Court, and I suspect the Supreme Court already knows this. And just to give you a quick reminder, the oral argument in uh, United States versus Rahimi, uh, which I will be probably live tweeting at the time, uh, is set for Tuesday, November 7th. Tuesday, November 7th, 2023 is the date of the oral argument. I don't know if it's the first argument or the second argument on that day, but I will let you know when I uh, check out the Supreme Court's docket more, in more detail in the next week or two. And by the way, the next thing that's going to happen is I believe on October 28th or so, the United States Department of Justice will file their reply brief responding to these 20 various briefs submitted uh, by the pro-Second Amendment community in support of the Rahimi argument that 922G8 is simply unconstitutional under the Supreme Court under the Supreme Court's precedent of Bruin and the text of the Second Amendment. Some of the major briefs that we've already seen come in the door, and again, we'll break these down in more detail. I'll give you just a quick list. The Second Amendment Foundation has filed a brief. The Firearms Policy Coalition has fired a, filed a brief. Gun Owners of America, Gun Owners Foundation, the Heller Foundation, the Virginia Citizens Defense League, the Tennessee Firearms Association, the Foundation for Moral Law, Center for Prosecutorial or uh, Center for Pros uh, Prosecutor Integrity, the National 
Association for Gun Rights, a powerful brief there, Cato Institute and the Goldwater Institute, Phyllis Schlafly's Eagles and the Eagle Forum Education and Legal Defense Fund has filed a brief, the Alameda County Public Defenders has filed a brief, National Association of Federal Defenders, that's very important. The National Association of Federal Defenders are the federal public defenders who defend a lot of indigents in federal court. It's going to be very interesting to see the arguments made by the National Association of Federal Defenders. We see the California Rifle and Pistol Association that's doing such a fantastic job out there in cases like Duncan versus Bonta and all throughout California trying to defend Americans' rights out there against Gavin Newsom and his little buddies out there that hate the Second Amendment. So yes, the California Rifle and Pistol Association and the gun owners of California submitted a brief today in, in Rahimi. The law enforcement groups and firearms groups, there's a whole list of law enforcement groups and firearms rights groups that are out there. Uh, we'll talk about them. There are a lot. Of, it looks like there are a lot of state-based groups that filed a brief. The Se uh, Crime Prevention Research Center, which I believe is John Lott's group, has filed a brief. The Center for Human Liberty has filed a brief. The Independence Institute and the Second Amendment Law Center, I believe that's Dave Copel's uh, uh, organization, filed a powerful brief as well. The Bronx Defenders Union and the National Association for Criminal Defense Lawyers filed a brief, as well as the National African American Gun Association filed a brief. All of these organizations have filed uh, briefs. We're going to talk about them in detail, but they've all filed briefs in support of the Second Amendment, uh, NYSERPA versus Bruin, and of course, uh, to say that 18 U.S.C. 922 G8 is unconstitutional as well it is. All right, folks, uh, quick summary. I just wanted to give you a quick summary. We'll talk about all this stuff in more detail. Uh, hope you learned something here today at the Four Boxes Diner. We'll keep breaking the news for you as it comes in, and uh, we'll look forward to talking to you again soon here at the Four Boxes Diner. Orders up, table 2A.